Okay, having spoken about the assumptions underpinning um, expected utility theory, and also having looked at one example of a utility function, I'll talk about some other ones and try to get you guys to think a little bit more about how choices work when it comes to different prospects. So imagine it's the case that we say that um, an economic agent, and we're going to call him um, Gautam for argument's sake, um, he has to choose between two different prospects. Prospect 1, um, Q1, so that's prospect 1, Q1, and we say that's equal to 100 with probability 1 and 0 with probability 0. So what that comes down to is you can get, say, 100 pounds with um, certainty. That's Gautam's first pros prospect. And then prospect 2, we'll label Q2, that's equal to um, 300 with probability 0 0.5 and then 0 with probability 0 0.5. Okay? So that's, so notice the pattern that we have here. We've got Y1, comma, P1, Y2, comma, P2. Um, well, where P2 there is equal to 1 minus P1, right? And then here we have for the um, other one, um, we've got uh, a new outcome, Y3, and then we've got P3, and then we've got, um, we'll just call this Y4, it's probability, and 1 minus P3 equal to P4. Okay, so that's how we're, um, again, describing the different prospects that someone might confront. Now, here's the first thing. If we were using just expected, E expected value there, um, expected value. Okay, so we haven't spoken about utility yet, right? So we're just talking about which of those gives us the largest amount of money in expectations. So remember to calculate an expected value, that's simply, um, so the expected value of Q1, that's going to equal um, 100 times 1, times 1, plus 0 times 0. That's equal to 100. In the other case, though, we've got the expected value of Q2. That's equal to 300 times 0 0.5 plus 0 times 0 0.5, and that's equal to 150. So if we're purely in the um, world of maximizing the expected value, okay, the actual like money prospects that we could get here, then someone is going to pick this. One, 150 is greater than 100. But notice that's saying nothing about expected utility, right? Now, what do we mean by that? Someone can rationally prefer a more certain outcome to the greater uncertainty of probabilistic outcomes. So the fact here you can get 300 pounds with a probability of 50 and zero with a probability of 50, right? Many people might refuse that when you offer them an alternative of 100 pounds with a certainty. That's 100 pounds with um, like money in the bank versus maybe getting 300 pounds with an expected value of 150. So um, what we want to think about this, right, is we want to think, okay, how could it be the case, or what kinds of um, utility functions would give us the relationship that the expected utility of Q1 is greater than the expected utility of Q2? That is, the expected utility of the first prospect is greater than the expected utility of the second prospect. So let's think about that for a little bit. Um, one such um, utility function is u as a function of y equal to y to the power 1 minus rho, all divided by 1 minus rho. Okay, And then we say that rho is going to be equal to 0 0.8. This is a certain functional form for a utility function. Oh, okay. So, what is happening here? Well, if we substitute rho in here, what do we have? We've got um, y to the 0 0.2 divided by what? 0 0.2. Okay. So, um, that will be our utility function in this context. Now, when we do that, what do we get? 
for the first prospect, we substitute that in, so the expected utility of Q1, that's going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to 100 raised to the power of 0 0.2, all divided by 0 0.2. That is equal to um, approximately, you should just use the approximately equal to sign, approximately equal to um, 12.56. So 12.56. That's what we get there. Now, um, how are we going to do this in the other circumstance? Well, we have to now substitute in the values. So I'm going to flip over a page. And let's look at what that's going to look like. So the expected utility of the second prospect, that's going to be equal to 0 0.5, the probability that it occurs, multiplied by um, multiplied by the utility of 300 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by the utility of 0. Now let's substitute those back into our utility function. We've got 0 0.5 multiplied by um, 300 raised to the power of 0 0.2 all divided by 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5 times um, 0 raised to 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2. Now, this means that the EU, the expected utility of prospect 2, is going to be equal to, uh, again, let's use approximately, approximately equal to 7.82 after rounding. Okay, so what do we see there? In this case, we have... Um, our previous one, EUQ1, that's equal to 12.56. And then over here, we have EUQ2 equal to 7.82. What does that mean? It means that EUQ1 is greater than EUQ2. So someone here is choosing the more certain, well, it's obviously certain, right? Or... I'm just going to say less risky prospect to the um, more risky prospect. We say that when someone has um, preferences like these, we're going to call them risk averse. So someone who's risk averse dislikes risk in some capacity. Okay? And so what this means is that if our utility function u dot um, is concave, right, as we'd have um, if we drew this function, the agent strictly prefers, so Gauten here, um, strictly prefers. certainty to uncertainty. Okay? It prefers certain things to risky or uncertain things. Okay? And then we say if u dot is concave, then the person is risk averse. Gautam in this case is risk averse. Gautam dislikes risk.